Welcome back. Let's talk about the Neo Gene, shall we? Again, I might break this up into two parts. I don't know. I was able to get to the other one in one video. Let's see what happens. Starting to get to modern day uh, North America, but still not quite there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so as we get into the latter part of the um, paleogene, um, or excuse me, into the neogene, we will obviously be getting into some um, glaciation as well, which does have an effect on the organisms in in part. In part, um, it's the middle of three periods of the Cenozoic era, divided into two epochs: the Miocene and the Pliocene. Uh, mammals and birds uh, evolved considerably. Uh, most other life forms relatively unchanged. Reptiles, amphibians, fish, you know, they're kind of doing their thing. Uh, but with new niches, new ecosystems, mammals and birds were really thriving. Um, obviously, a notable evolutionary path starting during the Neogene was that of the hominids, which eventually led to humans. <clears throat> so, uh, still kind of the, the grassland look, um, you know. Yeah, but again, the big the biggest thing might be the evolution of the of the hominids, and, and we'll talk about that in this and in the next section as well. So, in the first epoch of the Neogene period of the Cenozoic era is the Miocene epoch. Uh, distant cooling of the climate um, resulted in reduction in forests, um, which made drier environment which also means increase in grassy plains grassy plains usually are in more drier environments not like desert dry but a little bit drier uh, the mammalian life of the miocene uh, was marked by further development of the horse for for the evolution of the horse um, and the uh, extinction of the kind of and uh intelodonts the giant relative of the pig that big pig bear looking thing but we also get the appearance of mastodons raccoons and weasels that's a good time um so in the miocene we start to get the evolution of the american mastodon now there's a difference between a mastodon and a woolly mammoth they're not around uh north america yet we'll, we'll talk about that later but this is a, a mastodon and these are all kind of modern um uh relatives of the elephant um, cats, camels, dog-like carnivores, rhinoceros, rhinoceri were also common in North America. Um, uh, so these are uh, kind of images of early camels. So they don't quite yet have their evolutionary distinctive hump. Um, but this is kind of an image of, a, of an early camel. It's like a llama-giraffe kind of hybrid. So you can see how these things are kind of related now and where they may have come from. All right, jumping into the Pliocene epoch. Um, very modern appearance as we're getting into the quaternary. You know, things have been evolving and it's starting to look more like we, what we would recognize now for the most part. Um, earliest species of modern horse evolved during this time. During uh, this epoch as well, the Isthmus of Panama which connects North America to South America, allowed animals to kind of move between North and South America for the first time. Um, so here is North America, here's South America. The country of Panama is, is here right now. Um, so this is connected today as it was starting in this time. Because if we go back in time, five million years ago, not connected, 10, 20. So it took time for this to connect, but once it did, all right, allowed animal, land animals to kind of move and diversify between North and South America. But reversely, inversely, I should say, it cut off uh, diversification in the Caribbean and the Pacific Oceans because now this is, um, uh, this isthmus of Panama is now blocking sea life from going from one to the next. So on land, diversify, on in the sea, life got kind of cut off and kind of went on separate evolutionary tracks. Um, the animals of South American origin, such as giant ground sloths and armadillos and glyptodonts, uh, um, porcupines and capybaras, 
which are kind of these large rodent things, first appeared in North America, and then North American organisms like llamas and tapirs entered South America. So because of this land, new land bridge that developed, the Isthmus of Panama between North and South America, things were able to move around. Let's take a look at some of these giant ground sloths. You know, it's not the cute, cuddly sloth that we think of now. These are giant ground sloths. Um, here's some of those giant armadillo-y looking creatures. Again, we have a lot of these fossils. And here's a modern day capybara. Um, you can see these at, at zoos. Um, I know the um, Wildlife World Zoo, if you've ever been to, to that one, um, over near the White Tank Mountains off of Northern, has a bunch of capybara. They're pretty cute. I think they're pretty cute. Um, but their ancient ancestors were just kind of bigger. I mean, that's pretty big. I don't know. That looks like it could take a chunk out of a person. So um, We have ancestral llamas versus kind of more modern day llamas. Um, similar features, but they were a little bit bigger. And then tapers as well. Uh, tapers kind of moved around and evolved during these times. I mean, this is a taper now. It, it, it just looks like an ancient creature, like it belongs with these ancient um, uh, Cenozoic creatures. Um, and like they haven't really evolved too much. But they're just as cute and cuddly as could be. And they're, they're big. They're, they're big animals. Um, you know, smaller than a cow. Um, you know, I'd say they stand maybe about three, four feet at their shoulders. Um, uh, my wife used to volunteer at the Wildlife World Zoo, and, and some of her favorite animals to feed were the, the tapers, because they're kind of just like big, cuddly puppy dogs. But there's different kinds. But in any case, um, that closing or developing of the isthmus of the of Panama, Panama allowed tapirs to kind of move move about. And what about the hominid evolution? So the word hominid refers to a member of the family uh, hominidae, which consists of great apes and humans. And human beings arose through organic natural selection evolution from ancestral primates, something along these lines. Hopefully we don't have that same bad haircut. Um, humans did not, did not evolve from modern apes. Um, there's a comedian and he, he tell, and he's telling a joke or a story or something. And he's like, he's like, I don't believe humans evolved, uh, from monkeys. If humans evolved from monkeys, why is there still monkeys? Are they just happy out there living in nature? Because that's not how it worked. That's not true. Um, so humans did, a, did not evolve from modern apes or modern monkeys. Um, humans and modern apes share a common ancestor, but that species no longer exists. So going all the way back, say, almost 8 billion years, there was some common ancestor, but our line, our adaptation kind of split from that until we eventually uh, have Homo sapiens, and then that common ancestor split um, when it split and then further split created chimpanzees and bonobos, our closest relatives. But that was some common ancestor. It was not a chimpanzee. It was some ancestor we both we both share. Um, we have many anatomical, genetic, and behavioral simil similarities to the Western great apes. Um, family oriented, use tools, those sorts of things. And then also again, uh, anima um, anatomically, these are one things we look at when trying to put together an evolutionary tree. And if we look at the structure of the human leg, bones and muscles and um, gorillas, almost the same. Other than gorillas are just built and they're, they're, they'll rip you apart. But the structure is all the same. You know, similar structures, even though it's kind of formed a little bit different, similar muscles, similar uh, bones had to be an ancestor somewhere somewhere in there um hominid fossils date uh to the miocene epoch and are known um in africa and asia um africa some of the oldest ones the cradle of civilization or excuse me the, the cradle of, of of um human evolution i should say this is where things uh with where the hominid evolution began and we've found fossils and in some cases they found fossils just laying on the ground just laying right on top of the ground oh 
here are some fossils just laying on the ground. Um, and here are some of those, and those are some of the sites. Um, Lucy, I know Lucy, this one, Australopithecus afarensis, uh, um, kind of a mid hominid in the mid evolution here. Um, uh, Lucy was found, her, uh, there, her, um, her bones were just, I think, just found right on the, right on, right on top of the surface, just like, oh, and they kind of pick, pick, uh, pieced it together. Yeah, she was found right on the surface. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Okay. There's many connecting links uh, via fossils that are intermediates between uh, and along the way in the branch of the of the human family tree through hominids. Um, you know, very similar structures before we kind of dance all the way to modern Homo sapiens and what that may have looked like before we get to uh, our exact speech, genus and species, which is Homo sapiens sapiens. Um, yeah, and that's all via natural selection, genetic mutations that got us there over the past six million years. This is a really cool image because it shows human evolution from kind of the the proto cells in the uh, you know four billion, three to four billion years ago, all the way to modern humans. Obviously, it's too big of an image, so it's small. Uh, but if we kind of break it up, so starting uh, initially 4.3 billion years ago, how the cells evolved, how um, animal life uh, evolved in the ocean, um, how animal life evolved uh, into chordata animals with backbones, and how uh, those animals with backbones developed four legs, and then the tetrapoda, and how those um, organisms developed into mammals, milk producing animals and how those mammals evolved into primates, hominids, and then into homo sapiens. Interesting, it's an interesting picture. Interesting picture. All right, uh, I believe that brings us to the end of the uh, neogene. Again, plants are pretty much well in, in, in place, grasses, trees, modern, you know, what we think of modern day, we, we would probably have you know, during the neogene. And then that's going to bring us to the quaternary period, which is just the most recent small, slim little slice of, of Earth and life history. And that's where we're going to go to next. So let's go ahead and pause here. I'll see you back here in just a second.